Hey everybody, Omar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back with another fun-filled video for you. Today, we're going to go ahead and continue on with Part 7 of my Kershaw Discontinued Collection. Um, supposedly, this is like the best of what I've got. Actually, not even in this, this video. Part 8, which will be coming up right after this one. I'm going to finish it all off. So I saved the best for the last for you guys. Uh, so we're going to start off Part 7. With the knife that started it all. This is the Ken Onion Ricochet. Now, this knife was actually vintage 1998. So, this is the knife that got Ken Onion the job, supposedly, over at Kershaw. Uh, Kershaw, as you guys know, started out in 1974. Uh, they didn't have any designers uh, back in those days. Uh, you know, knife. You know, the idea of knives being uh, anything other than a tool and not something that you would collect probably didn't start till, I'm guessing, the popularity of knives came in and it's when pretty much Ken Onion came in, it became more of a popular thing. So this is the Ken Onion Kershaw Ricochet. This knife goes for right around uh, $279 and this knife is completely unique. Because this is a real custom knife. It just so happens to be a Kershaw knife. What you need to understand about the Kershaw Ricochet uh, is that this knife was made completely by hand. There are no machines that assisted Ken Onion in making this knife. I don't know how many of these he made. He did not make a lot of them because, like I said, he made each and every one of these knives by hand. Uh, I am almost sure he was not the only one working on the knife, but you can guarantee that no, um, no machines were made on this knife. Everything was all done by hand, including the G10. Those were sculpted by hand. Uh... Everything on this knife was done by hand, probably done by several different people, but from what I understand it, from what I've read, uh, there were no machines used in the production of this knife. So it's got a nice black wash pocket clip. The steel on the knife is 1440 uh, V, 440V, 1440, excuse me, 440V. Uh, steel, and the only thing that I do not like about the knife is that it is serrated. I do not like those, but, you know, again, it's a collector's piece, and what I love about this knife is I bought it for 14 bucks in a knife store. Uh, I saw this thing, and this knife actually was the first discontinued Kershaw knife that I got. How do you like that? I, I found a treasure and didn't even know it at the time. And uh, it started me collecting all the discontinued blades you've seen thus far. Uh, if we take a good close look at that G10, I mean, that is just spectacular. It's the same G10 that they use on, on like, South African custom knives. And, I mean, it's the real thing. You know, there's nothing on about that that's, you know, fake. Really well handmade knife. And that's what makes the knife so special. I'm, I'm almost positive Ken Onion touched the knife and, and did some kind of um, creating on the knife. Uh, but I'm almost sure maybe the knife was made by three or four different, you know, also three or four different people also assisted him in making the knife. But I can guarantee you the entire knife was made by hand. So Kershaw Ricochet, great piece, had to have it in the collection. So moving on. Uh, the next knife is a little weird. Uh, this is, and you can still get this knife on eBay and other places. Uh, this is the Kershaw Offset. It came in different versions. This is the original with the black and white paint splattering. Uh, what makes this knife really unique, again, it's a Ken Onion design. What makes this knife really unique uh, is the fact that it's made from uh, 440C, but more importantly, the knife was the blade of the knife was made using mite technology. Now, this 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 is back in the day before they had super steels like M390 and CV20 and all these other awesome super steels that you see today. During this during this time, this is probably the super steel that you could probably get 440 uh, 440C. It was made using mite technology, which is kind of a unique 
um, unique way of, unique way of making a blade. Basically, they took the four forty C steel, which was originally in liquid form, and they poured it into a mold. And then that mold is then cooled and, you know, becomes this blade that you see here. If you take a good close look at the blade, it is not perfect. It's actually kind of warped a little bit on one side. Uh, probably the only thing I don't like about the knife is that it is, like, way off-center because of the warping. I mean, it's really, you know, it's not really meant to be that way, but, I mean, that's the way the blade was made. Uh, but, you know... It doesn't uh, take away from the um, usefulness of the knife just because it's warped. The paint splattering on it, believe it or not, guys, each and every one of these knives that they made, the paint splattering is completely different on each knife. Not the same. Every one of them is different. Pocket Clip is really kind of cool. All black DLC coated. Once again, designed by Ken Onion. You can see the mold lines in the blade. You don't normally see that on a knife, but on this knife you can see that. Um, again, with the with the stud lock uh, on it, works quite well. Uh, and also, the flipper works really well. Um, <clears throat> another thing that makes this knife really unique and totally collectible is the fact that it doesn't just have one torsion bar like most spring-assisted knives. This one has two. One on both sides, and that's why the uh, spring assist is as powerful as it is. I mean, this thing's got a hell of a kick to it. I mean, it is just, I mean, your hand is shaking when it opens up. Really cool piece to have. Glad to have it. I have, they made a thousand, they, I could say, I could, I'd be happy to tell you that they made only a thousand of these, but I can tell you they've made more. Uh, but it says here, I've got, um, number 121 out of a thousand of this knife but i can tell you they made more there's even some without a serial number on it and there's no explanation as to why it didn't have serial number in fact uh this is the second offset that i have i actually gave the other offset away to uh you know a young a young man who uh you know at the time he was like it was his 17th birthday, and I wanted to give him something special. So I got, I gave him my uh, Kershaw offset without the, um, without the, the serial numbers on it. So, really great piece to have in my collection. Finally glad I got one with the serial number. So, yeah. The Kershaw offset, really big, clunky knife. Uh, even the back spacer's got that paint splattering on it. Really cool. Really, really crazy, crazy knife. Crushaw Offset. So moving on, uh, continuing on the collection, I've got a, another Kershaw Boa. This is the uh, third Kershaw Boa in my collection, again with the locks. Running theme, right? Uh, really great knife. Again, one of my main complaints about the knife is just how weird the flipper is located. Like I said, on most knives... Uh, the flipper isn't that low. You can see it's actually quite higher on the offset. But yet on the Kershaw Boa, Ken Onion put it all the way down there at the bottom. I don't know why he did that. It feels like it should be up here a little bit. But nevertheless, it still works. It's very functional. This one, um, I kind of call this the Joker knife. But really, it's uh, the Kershaw Boa multicolored um, knife. Uh, the knife comes in 440 V steel. It is a steel that is long gone. 440 V evolved. Uh, at first it was 440 V and then it became S60 V. Uh, so it, it kind of evolved into that that steel. So it's the same steel as S60 V, but at the time I think they called it 440 they called it 440 V at the time. If I'm wrong about that, please correct me and make sure you guys are commenting on my videos. Like I said, I want to learn as much as I can about my hobby. So really nice piece again with the backspacer, colored really nice. Uh, this knife is not as rare as some of the other ones that you've seen. You can still get this if you look hard enough. You'll see it. It's around, uh, although not as much as I used to see it. So maybe it's going away. Kershaw Boa multicolored in uh, 440V steel. The 
third knife that I'm going to, or the fourth knife I'm going to show you. This one I think was kind of a disappointment to me. Uh, this is the, the Kershaw Spiker. Um, I was so excited when I got went to get this knife, and when I got it, I was actually kind of disappointed. I don't know what, you know. Uh, the reason why I was disappointed was because this is a knife that was designed by Spyderco and Kershaw together. It, it, I mean, the design of the knife almost looks like two companies hate each other. I don't know. I mean, they didn't do much to it. Basically, they took two slabs of, G, of a G10, slabs some, uh, you know, carbon fiber twill on it and then add like a, a spider co hole and just said here are you guys gonna have it to take it you know it was almost like they they weren't even really trying to collaborate if you know what i mean uh it's an okay knife i mean it, it's very light uh the carbon fiber twill looks kind of nice but i mean you would figure you would think from two great companies like kershaw and spider co they would come out with something really nice and if you're going to sit there and tell me that this is the best they could do, really? I mean, it just kind of hurt when I saw it. I mean, it just... Don't get me wrong, I'm happy to have it in the collection, and I want to have it. Uh, but, you know, it's not. It's definitely not a knife that I'm going to pull out and play with and enjoy and just kind of marvel at. It's not one of those marveling knives. It's one of those... Oh, we have to get together with Kershaw and make something? All right, yeah, there you go. I'll just slap on some G10 and get a blade. S30B, I'll put the hole. You guys done? Yeah, hurry up. Let's get out of here. That's just. It just seems like that's what happened with this knife. There's not much thought to it. Uh, not much. Nothing really special uh, jumps out at it. It's an okay knife. Uh, but to sit there and say that this knife was made by uh, two companies, they could have done something better, at least in my opinion. I mean, you're talking about a knife that's supposed to be a collaborated knife by two great production companies. And in my opinion, it just seems like it felt short. Uh, feel free to comment below on my channel regarding this knife. If you guys love it, if you hate it, if you have the same opinion as me. I mean, whatever the th your thoughts might be, really would appreciate that. So, yeah, so the knife is all G10. Uh, yeah, carbon fiber twill. Uh, interesting blade shape. It's got the Spartaco hole on it and, you know. Kershaw Spiker, and you can see right there on the blade, that's how, the, how it got its name, Spy and Kerr, Kershaw. Maybe they were fighting over the name of the knife. Maybe they were thinking, they, Kershaw was thinking, why can't it be called Kerr Spy? And maybe they got a fight over that and decided, okay, let's just make the knife and get out of here. So, Kershaw Spiker, you know, not really one of my favorites, but, you know, it's in the collection nonetheless. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of happy to have it. Next knife, again, the Kershaw Boa. This is my third Kershaw Boa in the uh, collection. Uh, I th actually, I think I showed you this one before. I've also got it in S30B. Uh, this is the one in S60B. So you actually saw this knife um, in, I think, in the first video of my Kershaw Discontinued. But I've got the, the S30B uh, knife uh, also in my collection looks exactly like this knife except the blade is s30b so yeah kershaw boa in black uh yeah i mean i've always called these two knives sort of like the batman and joker knives because they're kind of like the same but this one's black and this is like multicolored reminds me of the joker i don't know why but yeah so the kershaw boa again and another you know, different variation once again uh really great piece spring assisted dots on the knife do provide nice traction when you're holding it uh the scales are made of aluminum they're all aluminum scales black uh black wash pocket clip there dlc coated blade i don't know how you guys feel about dlc i'm a collector so it doesn't really matter to me but yeah if you were to use this knife yeah that dlc blade would definitely wear off uh, over time DLC to me is kind of ironic because they put it on the knife to uh, protect the blade, but then the blade looks ugly. Uh, I mean, it would be great if eventually the DLC coating would wear off, right? And then underneath it, you'd see this nice, shiny, uh, metallic underneath. It would just pop up like magic. That would be kind of cool, but, you know. Nonetheless, it's not. 
It's kind of disappointing. One of the most interesting things about this uh, thumb stud, I, I forgot to mention that. You can actually take the thumb stud off, unscrew it, turn it around and put it on the other side. Now it's a lefty knife. Uh, and you can make it a lefty knife by taking the pocket clip, putting it back over here, take the screw, unscrew it, put it on this side, and then these, uh, you know, the Phillips head would be on the other side, and then you got yourself a left-handed knife. The only thing is that the pocket clip does not go, uh, tip up on that one. Just, you know, it's uh, kind of unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Uh, so it's a three-way position pocket clip on all the Kershaw boas. Forgive me if I forget to miss something that's important on the knife. But then again, I have done videos on each one of these separately. So if you want to check those out. Some of them are pretty horrible. Maybe I'll do an upgrade on them. I don't know. Kershaw Boa S60V. Also have an S30V. Uh, this final piece in this quick 20-minute video is a monster of a knife. And one of my favorites. This is the Kershaw Tirade. The original... Kershaw Tirade. Really big brown chocolate knife. There's the chocolate icing right there. Really very pretty. Uh, this is all titanium. Imagine that. Kershaw made a titanium knife, folks. So the knife's all titanium. You can see this almost as an early precursor to zero tolerance. <clears throat> Definitely had to have this in the collection. <laughs> I think I won this one on eBay for 102 bucks. I got a really good deal out of that. So the knife is a composite blade. The model number of the knife is 1850. Uh, all Kershaw knives are made in the USA. Uh, the top portion of the knife is CPM, uh, or sorry, 154 CM for the top part of the knife, the spine, and for the cutting edge, it's D2. It's a wonderful combination. Probably going to do a video on composite blades. I think that would be a great topic to talk about. Why do they even exist at all? What are they doing? Is it just simply art or is it uh, is there some actual functionality to the concept of making a composite blade? So yeah, the Kershaw Tirade. This is a a spring assisted knife all titanium the the blade is roughly 3.5 inches in length really big 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 clunky knife but still fun to have as collector but yeah they did use this thing that you know like 10 15 years ago it was a real popular knife it would be definitely be used as a heavy duty knife uh this knife is very sought after <laughs> So I want to say a quick word about this. If you guys want to get one of these knives, you can. Uh, there's a Kershaw tan version on eBay. The guy's selling it for $4,000. If you don't believe me, go on eBay right now and check it out. All you guys will definitely flip your lids. I mean, 4000 bucks for a knife like this? But yeah, you can check that out on eBay. Uh, I actually spoke to the gentleman that's selling that knife, and the only thing he answered me with was, Why? What are you, poor? I don't know. Go figure. $4,000, and it's not even the original one that I have in my hand. It's a Kershaw Tan one in G10, and he's selling it for $4,000. Who knows? But, you know, it's no crime. People can sell their knives for whatever they want to. Uh, you know, just don't be surprised if you get funny looks when you uh, put a knife up for $4,000. That's not worth that much. So, Kershaw Tirade, a great collectible. Not worth four grand though. All right, so this is Omar the Knife Shark Guy signing off with part seven of this series. Like I said, I promised you uh, the best for last. And that is going to be coming up in my final video in a few minutes. I can't wait to, to show you guys what I have for my final knives because there are really only five of them in that final video. But they are five of the best Kershaw knives. Uh, best of the Ker five of the best Kershaw collectible knives that I own in my collection. Uh, really happy to have those. I can't wait to get back and show those to you. So I will be right back in a few minutes. And uh, this is Omar the Knife Shark Guy. Hoping you've enjoyed uh, this.
this talkative discussion on the continuing uh, history of Kershaw Knives and my Kershaw Discontinued collection. This is Omar, the Knife Shark Guy, signing off. Please comment on anything you see in any of my videos. I have not said that enough. I'm guessing that's probably why I don't get a lot of comments, because I don't tell you guys to comment. Please do comment anything or everything. I would prefer no insults, but, you know, got to take the good with the bad. This is Omar, the Knife Shark Guy, signing off. Happy knife hunting, guys, and I'll see you in a little bit.